Nanga. Hi, baby. I need you to do me a favor. And what's that? Make me a music studio desk. A desk? Okay. Uh, what kind of material? Because we've got a bunch of different materials here. We've got some birch plywood that's like 13 layers. That's like a pretty strong stuff. We can stain it to make it look dark if you want. I want a walnut. Uh, excuse me? A walnut. You want walnut in your desk? Yeah. No. I want a walnut. No. I want a walnut, sweetheart. No. I want a walnut. No. Okay. All right. Walnut it is. I need a piece of paper and a pencil. It is perfect. Look, what? it's gonna be perfect for your studio. That is amazing. So it has all the components with the walnut side going up into a walnut top. And then there's gonna be some Baltic birch because we have to use Baltic birch with this particular project. But I think the contrasting colors are gonna be nice with the dark walnut and the light birch. You're the best. I love you. Let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back to another fantastic build by the McKeels Woodworks. All right, so to jumpstart, we're going to uh, be measuring some rough lumber. This is a rough walnut, as you saw from the intro. What I like to do is use a crayon and measure my parts and just leave them a couple inches oversized. So that way, after we're done machining them and cutting them down, it leaves enough leftover material to square them up and also uh, flatten the surfaces. And to do the flattening, we're going to be using my eight inch jet jointer. This thing powers through this hard walnut and I don't have a helical head yet, but I have been doing a lot of research on a helical head, uh, still considering it for the future upgrades. Jumping over to the Laguna table saw, gonna be squaring up the other end of that walnut and then to plane the top we're going to be using the dewalt 12.75 so let's just say 13 inch planer there we go just running them through making sure they're all the same thickness this is going to be essential when you go to assemble it and uh, do things like dados and you know what i found is making sure your material is the same thickness saves a lot of time in the long run so spend time on either choosing boards that are within the same thickness or machining them to the same thickness. Going back to the Laguna, gonna be squaring them up and also cutting some of the boards in half because uh, the stock size that we had to make for the tabletop required us to cut one of those boards in half. So here I'm gonna be uh, making some score marks for our joinery. We're gonna be using a biscuit joiner for this process. As you can see, we've got the Dewalt biscuit joiner. This has uh, been a, a lifesaver, actually, with uh, just you know making sure that when you do your glue up, everything stays level and at the same height because that insert there keeps everything in its place. It also adds strength to the build as well. So uh, this is going to add some longevity to our build. And always uh, tight bond to is our go-to glue and we are liberal with the glue to say the least whenever we glue anything up i always want to see it dripping down the front or the back of the board that's when you know you've got enough glue using some of those three quarter inch pipe clamps keeping it in its uh, place and as you can see here waited about 24 hours taking it out of the clamps and as i had mentioned just a minute ago squaring things up with the table saw and also using the miter saw to cut that 
45 degree angle. All right, so one of the most difficult parts that we're finding with this desk build are the inner legs. The inner legs are cut at a 45 degree angle on the top and the bottom. And we have a piece that's 14 and a half inches wide. So we need both of these sides to be the same degree or angle. So one of the things that we're doing is trying to find out the, the cuts that we need to make and the measurements. And measuring an angle isn't necessarily the easiest thing. All right, so we're gonna use a one foot square for this. And we know that the inside corner of a square is 45 degrees. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So we've got from the starting point, it's gonna be the beginning corner. Let me move this down just a little. And right there, so it's our 45 degree cut, like that. And then we can just uh, finish that mark, like so. Okay. And our first measurement that we're gonna pull is 40 inches and 3 eighths. So we're gonna hook it on the corner. There's our 40 inches and 3 eighths. That's our pivot point for our second 45 degree angle. So we put the starting point to be right there. And measure, cutting our 45 degree right there, like so. Same thing, we'll just finish off that mark. So this corner, we want to pull a measurement of 15 and 7 eighths coming in. So we're gonna do that, we're just gonna hook it on the corner and 15 and 7 eighths is right there. Okay, and from this corner down here, we're gonna pull same exact measurement, 15 and 7 eighths, which is right here. Now with these two measurements, we can use a level, put our level on that mark, put our level on this mark, just double check, make sure they're exactly where they need to be. Take some time on this because this is going to be your reference for your legs, for your cut marks. So here we go, and there's a nice mark just like that. And one last thing we can do is we can get, if you have a degree finder, you can pull that out, or an angle finder. And right there we've got 41.2, and we can check that by coming over here and just making sure that this side squared up it says 41.2 and it looks pretty good this is 41.3 and I think we're good with that so we're gonna go ahead and cut these with the table saw and that's it Going to be building the workspace. This is essentially uh, one piece of three quarter inch Baltic birch with a two and a half inch spacer on the bottom of it just to thicken things up around that border. Also add some extra support. One of the things we didn't capture in this video is us running that through the table saw to square up both of those uh, glued ends together. We're going to be putting a walnut border so that the legs match the workspace top. So this is uh, a walnut strip that we've cut. I'm gonna be attaching it the way that we usually attach it, which is wood glue, and then run some hardwood dowels to add a little accent color and also add strength. This is a nice trick. You put wood glue and then use painter's tape and that holds it right in place. Once the glue is set, then you can start working on your dowels. All right, time to set up the dado stack. 
We've got an eight inch Diablo set up here and this thing has been amazing. I know a lot of people spend big bucks on their dado setups, uh, but this I consider to be somewhat mid-grade and it's always performed very well for us. Gonna be cutting some dados in the top of the desk, one on the left, the right, and actually one in the center for the support for the shelves. And as you can see, there's the dado inserts and everything lines up perfectly. Gonna be going along to the keyboard insert. And as you can see, we're kind of measuring and cutting and designing as we go with this. Before we go ahead and put the walnut tabletop and sides together, we wanna fill the voids with May Springs, maca powder and Total Boat two-part epoxy. And anytime you're working with epoxy, you always wanna have a torch nearby and after about five to 10 minutes of that epoxy sitting, you wanna hit those bubbles with a torch. Gonna to be sanding and working on the finish. And for this finish, we went with shellac. And this is actually the first time that we've used shellac in this wood shop. And I've got to say, I really like working with it. The smell is its greatest downside, but how quick it dries and how fast you can sand and put multiple layers on is definitely the best plus. We will use shellac again. And as far as the finishing goes, we're just gonna go ahead and paint the screws black so that hopefully you won't see them when the desk is assembled. All right, everyone, the time has come to assemble the desk. And the reason that we're assembling this in a place is because it's actually very large and will not fit through the door assembled. So I asked for my wife to give me some assistance in this process. After all, it is her idea to put walnut in the desk. So it's fitting that she's there helping assemble the desk. It takes a little bit of time to get the angles right, but once you get them all set, everything goes together like Legos. And finally, for the keyboard tray, we were brainstorming and trying to come up with some creative ideas to get the keyboard to stay, so that way it won't fall out and break a toe or something. But this is what we came up with. A couple screws will hold this thing in place, and the only time you'll ever see them is if you get down on your hands and knees and you look up underneath the desk. And as you see, it works perfectly fine, so we're gonna stick with that. Well, there you have it. The desk is finally finished and in its place. My wife definitely enjoys this and that's actually rewarding enough. See, being a creator doesn't always mean that you're going to do it perfectly, but being a creator means that you've tried something new and hopefully you went out of your comfort zone in making something. And for this build, we definitely went outside of our comfort zone. The angles and even the colors in this desk were challenging, but all in all, we're very satisfied with how the project turned out. We want to say thank you so much for watching this video and being a part of our process for creativity. 
And if you like what you see, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Like this video and leave a comment down below. We'll see you next time.